welcome everyone. And uh, I just want to begin this morning uh, by setting a little bit of context and, and thinking about everything that's been going on in our country um, in the last few days. Um, this is a meditation class, as it were, and, and what is, you know, what is the role of, I think the big question I've been asking is what is the role of meditation in this time? Um, uh, I love the, the definition that Michael Beckwith gives of meditation, which is paying undistractable attention to reality. Paying undistractable attention to reality. And, you know, I think if we're honest with ourselves, I mean, this is the thing about meditation. It's all about um, being honest with ourselves, facing up to the truth, um, being fearless in the face of reality. And so the reality in America is that we have broken systems. We have broken systems of government. We have broken systems of justice. We have more have a system of injustice. Uh, Michael Beckwith, who runs the Agape Spiritual Center in, um, in Los Angeles, um, he referred to the killing of George Floyd as a public lynching, which uh, was a really disturbing, disturbing reality check. You know, we can compartmentalize things, we can justify things in our minds, um, but to, to really bring it out to the front, to the forefront, to the truth of what is going on in America, you know, which is very uncomfortable for so many of us to deal with if we're white. Um, now, black people in this country and brown people in this country have known these things for a long time. Um, and so the question becomes, well, what is our role? You know, what do we do with this, with the, the realities of the current situation, the realities of our broken systems? Um, if meditation is a process of, of paying undistractable attention to reality, and we're confronted with some very difficult realities, um, we've already got the pandemic happening. Now we have social unrest, um, we have racial, we've always had racial divisiveness in this country, um, but it's coming, what, what meditation does is it brings these things to the surface, it brings them to consciousness. Um, and with consciousness is um, a certain level of empowerment. And with awareness comes a certain level of responsibility. We can't turn away. And so I, I want to, you know, in terms of really facing up to reality, like what is this thing, America? Where is this place that we live, America? Um, there's a number of really incredible voices out there that, that can help us with the reality check. Uh, voices like Angela Davis, uh, voices like Toni Morrison, voices like Alice Walker. These are people we should be reading to get a sense of reality. Um, particularly for African Americans in this country, to really understand that, to really understand the context of where all this is coming from. Um, Cornell West. You know, I noticed uh, everyone on, on Instagram yesterday was doing this Blackout Tuesday thing. I think the intention was to be in solidarity. And I found myself like going into that space of like, oh, everyone else I know, all my friends in my feed are doing this. Maybe I should do this too. And then I just was like, wait, you know, I, I read this thing, like, this is not helpful. <laughs> this is not, this is counterproductive. You know, it's so easy to fall into the, the kind of the herd mentality. Um, so instead, I, I reposted a conversation with Cornell West, uh, which was really difficult to listen to in some ways, but so articulate and so clear, um, so confrontational to put things in context, to help us face this, to give a little attention to this undistractable point of reality that is a broken justice system, that is a criminal injustice system 
in our country. Uh, and now we can also, in the context of, of um, becoming more awake through meditation practice, um, I think the last two months, if nothing else, has shown us how broken the healthcare system is. Someone referred to it as a sick care system, you know, where, where you know, pharmaceutical companies and corporations are profiting from people's illness. Like there's something seriously wrong with that. This isn't a, a partisan concept. This is a human idea. You know, none of this strikes me as Republican or Democrat or progressive or conservative. You know, we're talking here about some human dignity issues, some very base human dignity issues, healthcare, justice, kindness, support, you know, the role of government to support people on equal terms, no matter the color of their skin. And so, you know, what do we, I, I've, <laughs> I'm sort of at a loss of words. You know, I've been so um, distraught, quite honestly. Uh, I've been grieving, uh, I've been crying a lot, I've been angry. Um, you know, thank God for practice, right? Or I'd be out there burning shit in the streets too. You know, I'm, I'm angry, but what, what, what meditation, what contemplative practice gives us is, is perspective, awareness, and a way to channel this energy, this emotional energy, into a more productive space. Because what we need right now is we need awake people. We need each one of us to be able to articulate alternatives to these broken systems. Um, it's not like a, a question of, of, you know, whether you believe in capitalism or don't believe in it or whatever. It's like, what is working? What is serving the most public good? And there's a lot of great models out there, but we need us, each one of us as individuals, to support those models, to, to research those models, to, to get behind those models. And, and to, to come to some sense of collective um, what's the word? Um, kind of collective um, integration where we can support new ways of, of um, Well, of, 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 you know, of in, in implementing healthcare, just one example, of governing. You know, there's great models of social democracy in Western Europe, you know, but America has some sort of a, a strange legacy of um, individualism and unfettered capitalism, you know, masking as freedom. But unfettered capitalism is not freedom. You know, to create, to have the freedom to create um, I don't know, like an abstract financial instrument, for example, that makes sense to nobody except some Wall Street executives that can make, you know, billions of dollars off of people who just simply want a mortgage for their house. That's not useful. That's not helpful. Being able to profit off of any, you know, ingenious manipulative concept. Um, and so there is a role that government plays in terms of, of um, supporting the most good, the most public good. Um, you know, and we, do, we just have to face up to, I think meditation gives us this, this possibility of facing up to reality and being with the, the emotions and the confusion around it without having to to react um, brashly or from a point of position, but to understand that, that opinion and belief might be the problem. <laughs> we can get so mired in our opinions, right? Whether that's left or right or center or whatever, um, we can get so mired in our beliefs. Um, I mean, I just keep coming back over and over again to, to um, can I come from a place of love, 
you know, can I come from a place of service in regards to, um, to well, whatever, in my case, whatever I'm teaching. Um, you know, can I come, when I, when I contact my elected officials, can I come from a place of peace? Can I come from a place of love? Um, right now, I'm in a, in a fair state of anger, so that's kind of hard. <laughs> and um, so I sit, you know, so I, so I sit with it, sit with that anger, feel deeply into it, honestly into it. And, um, and so we, you know, we come to, I was thinking of, of reading this, this um, I wrote a letter to, to the community, um, but you can read that, um, you're on my email list, um, you can read that. And um, that was the best way that I could articulate what's, what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking about and, and how I wanna be of service in this time. Um, you know, I, it's, it's nice, to, you know, in some ways, one can get stuck in a, in a little place of, of spiritual, um, well, there's spiritual materialism, which is a term that was um, coined by uh, Trungpa Rinpoche. Um, but the, it's really almost like a, a, a point of like spiritual detachment, you know, where we can get comfortable in, in just sitting in our, our cushion and sort of contemplating our emotional states and letting the world do its thing out there. But I think we've come to a point in our evolution as humans where there's no, you know, there's no separation between um, individual awakening and social, cultural awakening. Um, I think the time is now for us to wake up as a collective um, and to to be the voice of, of, of transformation. You know, I think a lot of these, um, what's going on now with the, the president and, you know, as erratic and horrendous as it all is, it's, it's bringing to light a lot of these sort of unconscious um, realities that a lot of us, you know, have, have thought and experienced as humans. And a lot of the truths in, um, in America that, that can get, paved over when, you know, we have um, a democratic president in office, which somehow feels safe in a way. Um, there, there seems to be a, a sense of stability and the economy is doing okay. Um, and yet there's a lot of turmoil going on in America during the Obama years. So I don't want to go too far into this political rabbit hole, but I do want to, do want to, place a meditation in the context of um, this current time and how we can leverage um, a sense of mindfulness in, in realizing our potential for, for transformation and, and, and realizing that our voice matters, even in a small way. You know, it may not be that we're gonna be out there in the streets, you know, hurling rocks and lighting buildings on fire, holding a sign and, you know, protesting peacefully or whatever it is. Um, it may be that we're writing letters. It may be that we're pressuring our politicians. It may be that we're, you know, joining the school board. Um, it, it may be that we're, we're taking a stand and finally voicing, you know, our experience and our truth. I mean, we need everyone's voice. I think there's, there's, a, there's a chronic lack of engagement, civic engagement in our country. I think it's because so many of us are fed up. You know, we, we see the system is so broken. We see it, the corruption. Um, but now we have to see ourselves as agents of change. And um, I think meditation gives us, can give us a, a new, um, an expanded sense of possibility where we can leverage the energy of despair, the energy of, of um, confusion, you know, the energy of sort of giving up and being like, no, like my voice can matter here, even in a small way. And I know so many of you are writers and creatives, um, and which means that we're communicators. So what, how can we voice our vision for a better country, for a better community through our writing? 
not to say it has to be overt um, necessarily, or it has to be um, ranty, although that's perfectly welcome. <laughs> Maybe it is ranty. But when you think about someone like, um, you know, the artistry of Toni Morrison or the artistry of Alice Walker in her poetry and in her storytelling, you know, what radical inspiration that is. And so I'm really thinking in my own life, my own writing, right now I'm working on a book proposal for Sounds True for my next book. And it's a, you know, it's kind of a, a, a spiritual meditative book that, that so far has not really been in the context of this larger conversation that I'm exploring right now. Um, and so I'm rethinking that. Like, is there a place for civic conversation in this, in a meditation book, you know, in a self-help book? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of answers here, but I wanted to bring up questions. Um, I wanted us to kind of sit with a little bit of this, um, sit with your own sense of, of um, how meditation, what is meditation's role for you in this time? Um, and then um, we'll sit for about 10 minutes and then we're going to open things up at um, right about 9.30 uh, because I wanna hear from you and, and how you've been managing um, and digesting all of this yourselves. Um, so thank you for listening. I know that was <laughs> pretty incoherent and or random and a little bit babbly, but um, as you can tell, I'm, I'm fairly rattled by everything that's been going on. It's uh, very emotional, very upsetting. Um, and so at the end of the day, I think it's, it's time for silence. Um, so let's find a way to, to sit comfortably as per usual. And let's begin, um, as I always like to begin, with a single deep breath inward through the nose and oh, exhaling out through the mouth. And I think we might need a second deep breath inward through the nose and exhaling out through the mouth. And maybe even a third deep breath inward through the nose. And exhaling out through the mouth. Just as a way to find your center. Now just allowing your breath to be natural. Finding that natural state of the breathing body. And even as things might have been stirred up in the mind, allowing your eyes to close gently and allowing your mind to settle, your, your shoulders to relax a little bit. With each exhale, just settling a little bit more deeply into the breathing body. And as we come to this point of awareness with courage, willing to pay undistractable attention to reality. Just tuning in breath by breath, moment by moment. And realizing in this moment that there's nothing to believe. There's nothing to figure out. There's nothing to fix or to get right. We're gathering in creative community to bear witness. to our own internal sense of spaciousness.
allowing those energies of the body to arise and pass away as is their nature. With each breath, we cultivate a fearlessness. And a willingness to simply be with the reality of the present moment. With a heart of compassion and loving kindness. So after a few moments, you might have noticed your mind beginning to wander. And just with the sound of my voice, bring your awareness and your attention back to the breathing body. Simply back to your experience of breath in and breath out. Checking in with the heart of your reality in this moment. With your heart as open as possible. With an embracing compassion and loving kindness.
with these last couple minutes of the meditation. See if you can bring your awareness back to the breathing body. Simply sensing into your experience of just sitting here in this moment. Feeling your feet on the ground. Your body on the cushion. The weight of your head on your shoulders. The sensation of breathing in and breathing out. And let's close by just offering ourselves a little prayer, a little silent prayer of loving kindness to ourselves. May we be well. May I be well. May I be at ease. May I be free from suffering. All right, and that is the bell. So welcome back. And uh, I'm just looking at a, um, a couple of messages here and um, there's a good question. A lot of great comments and questions. Um, one from Marika is um, asking about, or maybe Karen and Marika <laughs> asking about, what is a spiritual bypass or an example? I can give you a quick example of spiritual bypass um, in my own experience. And that is of, of simply, you know, I have a, a tendency, I've been practicing for a long time now and, and meditation in a lot of ways for me at this point, a lot of the time is, is very comforting. You know, it's very relaxing to me. I can go into this very deep and what feels like kind of a selfless and integrated and um, very nourishing, beautiful place. Not always, but a lot of times. And, and so it can be kind of a, a refuge of um, dis, almost discon, disconnection, if I'm not careful. Um, and so that's, to me, I mean, it, there's this tendency to want to go to that sort of warm, fuzzy place of, of meditation. Um, and so that could be one example of, of a spiritual bypass where you can, where, you know, I might stay in that, in that place of, of, um, of sort of high spiritual ideals that are a little bit disconnected or ungrounded from the reality of you know, the social context, the cultural context, the political context, you know, it's true. There is this higher truth of spiritual awakening and spiritual connectivity. And there's the grounded truth of I'm in a body right now in this time, and I'm in a society and I'm, and um, I'm in a culture. And as a participant human being in that culture, I have a civic responsibility to show up and participate in a way. And so am I, you know, I just ask myself that on a regular question, how am I participating? In what way am I participating? How could I participate more? How could I be more engaged and, and offer more of a contribution? So I don't know if that, <laughs> if that gets it in any of it. You know, all things do bloom from, from change. Um, and so I just, I'm just looking at the time. I want to honor your time. Um, but I do want to close with a, just a really quick 
dedication of merit. Um, just to say that, you know, may our time together, uh, may us coming together in creative community, in conscious community, may it be of benefit and service, not only to ourselves, but to our families, um, to all people that we come into contact with, whether virtually or in person in this time. Um, may our intentions and our practices radiate out further into our societies, our cities, um, to be of benefit to all beings everywhere. Um, and I just want to thank all of you for your incredible kindness, your incredible courage um, for showing up and your contribution. Um, whether you voiced out loud or whether you were here listening, I, I honor you, I see you, I hear you. And um, just to remind you that your voice absolutely matters in this time. So um, carry on with faith and with hope and with presence and uh, know that there is love and guidance all around us um, and i look forward to seeing you all next week and if you're interested in coming on friday we will be doing some writing so we can kind of write into some of this energy as well <laughs> so um, many much love and many blessings and thanks always for being here and um, i look forward to seeing you soon <laughs>